Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we have the G&G &G Combat Machine Gas Blowback Rifle, or GBBR for short. Uh, sorry about my table being a little messy. This is kind of the table I use when I come outside target shoot. Uh, there's a little bit of BBs on it. It's kind of dirty because it sits out here and it's a wood table, but besides that, let's get into the review. Okay, so the G&G &G Combat Machine is a great gun for starters and um, kind of mid-experienced players. Um, it, it can be good for pretty good players too, but by then they'll probably have a way better gun. But it is uh, the cheapest gas blowback rifle on the market. Uh, well, the cheapest M4. There are other gas blowbacks like Uzis and stuff, but I mean actual big rifle. Um, there's a dang squirrel over there, so <laughs> don't mind that. But let's get into the box. Okay, the box is pretty nice, actually. I don't have any complaints there. It looks pretty nice. The packaging is all right. Um, you can see I have my manual and stuff. Uh, you'll have all that stuff. I got from Airsoft GI, so I have some Airsoft GI stuff. The packaging is okay, you know. Not too many complaints. Um, I do like Styrofoam better, though, than the plastic, but... It got here fine. So let's just put this box over here and get to the actual gun. Um, I don't know why there are 12 gram BBs on here. But anyway, the gun, as you can see, is a pretty nice looking gun. All right, um, it's a pretty nice looking gun. This is the CQB version. It does not have a rail system, but you can buy a rail system for about 50 or 60 bucks to put on it. Um, but anyway, I really like this gun. Uh, it's all polymer plastic except for uh, just various parts, like mainly internals. Uh, this sling point, the sling points are metal. There are lots of metal parts on this, just not the body or frame. So that can be a con. Um, let's see, can we focus? Yeah. So as you can see, there's some nice G&G Combat Machine trademarks. Uh, but yeah, th this gun's pretty good overall in that area. Um, let's focus back in. Sorry about that, I'm on a DSLR so there's no auto focus or I'm not on auto focus. I don't really like it too much. Um, this little rubber pad right here does not come with it. This comes with, it just comes by itself. It doesn't come with anything. It may come with a gun. I like this rubber pad though, it's pretty thick. I would suggest getting it because the back end of the actual stock on this is pretty rough. But let's just go from the back to the front. I kind of like doing it that way. So you have a six position stock. It's pretty nice. I'm probably not going to get all the positions in there. No, I epically failed. That was only like three. Uh, but it is a six position. I usually keep it on about five or six. Uh, that's what I like to keep it on. Uh, there's a metal sling point right here. Yeah, there's a metal sling point right there, and also another metal sling point right here. Now, this gun is mainly constructed of polymer, but like I said, so the upper and lower receiver are polymer. Now when you're shooting this, real quick, uh, just make sure to load around into the chamber by pulling this back, which will release the dust cover. Um, as you can see here, you have your hop-up unit. Uh, let's see, can you see that pretty good? Yeah, right here is your hop-up unit. So yeah, it works pretty good. It's kind of stiff though, so it's good for small adjustments. Um, let's go ahead and put that dust cover on. It makes a pretty good uh, sound, like a metal clank sound when you pull it back with the dust cover on. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, you just got your spring detensioner right over here, right here. Um, but yeah, I really like this. The trademarks look pretty cool. Um, yeah, the fire selects, of course, uh, M4 fire select. It's, let's see, it's not ambidextrous. So lefties, you may have a problem there. 
but it's a 180 degree. I don't really like that too much. I love uh, the fire select on the scars, uh, like the classic army scar, because it's only a 90 degree turn. But yeah, so this is a pretty cool gun. Uh, there is no bolt catch, which kind of a little bit upset about, but that's fine. Uh, you get up here, you got your plastic handguard. It's pretty good constructed though. This is pretty thick plastic. You can't like bend the magwell or anything. It's it's really good. Right here, uh, you have a metal outer belt barrel, and then you also have your metal inner barrel. As you can see that little inner barrel right there. And it is very, very um, nice to have this little chip in here, but just make sure you know it's not broken. Uh, that's just how it should be. Uh, I believe real guns have that. And so you got your other front sling point, which I don't use because I use a one point sling. So yeah. I really like this gun. Um, the magazine, I just want to go over the mag real quick. It's a really nice mag, uh, metal, of course. The only thing that's weird is uh, the gas goes right here instead of in the bottom like most ones. And don't try to load the gas in here because that's not where it goes. Uh, it goes in the side, so just hold the mag like this. Have your gas can upside down. That's how you need to load it. And then use your speed loader or whatever kind of loader if you want to hand do it. That would be terrible though. So I would get a speed loader and just load it in here. Make sure to use high quality BBs because I use some terrible Crossman BBs. And just want to say I had to send the mag back so they could fix it. Um, so use high quality BBs. I prefer to use Elite Force or Matrix. Uh, Evic.com. Their Matrix BBs are actually on sale. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I wish Elite Force BBs would be on sale. But yeah, so the mag's really cool. Now, I do not have a chronograph, which I want one so I can do some shooting tests. But whenever I get one, I will definitely do those tests. But I'm going to go from what the website says, and it shoots about 350 to 370 FPS. Um, now that's the same on the longer barrel version, so I'm thinking this one shoots more around the 350 range because it is, has a CQB barrel, so it's not the longest barrel ever. But yeah, so this gun overall is great. I give it an, I'd say maybe an 8 out of 10. Um, yeah, so I really like this gun. I would recommend picking it up. It's about $140. It's around that range. Um, I'll put a link in the description to evic.com or Airsoft GI, whichever one has it in stock. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's a nice gun. Oh yeah, one more thing real quick is that um, disassembly of this gun is very easy. Um, just be careful when you're taking it out. You need to pull this little thing out. I'm not going to take it apart right now, but I do know how to. Uh, just pull that little point thing out and then this uh, I have them actually switch this right here this little little piece uh, I can't think of the word for it I'm kind of spacing on it but this right here you need to pull it but it's not going to come all the way out just so you know uh, let's try to focus in on this uh, is that okay okay right here um, it's not going to pop all the way out, but just get it as far as you can. Don't try to force it out because it's not supposed to come out. And then you'll just lift it out. Lift, pull the upper receiver by this if you want to. I have a little handle. But anyway, I like this gun. I would recommend it um, to anybody who's a starter or mid-level player. I've taken it out on the field. It works great. So, alright guys, this has been Seaman Airsoft. I'm gonna go.